Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie Is That Done. I remain your host, Shadow Theory 333 and the last match for tonight is going to be Capricious versus Spartacus on Altair Crossing, one of the most tactical maps in the game, probably. Definitely the most reclaim focused. Capricious going for the Cloakie Bot Factory, while Spartacus going for the Shield Bot Factory, a factory I have found suspiciously la absent in the last couple matches. I'm really kind of surprised it was not used in the previous game, because while, I mean, Cloakies are okay in Red Comet, I feel like shields are a bit more of a popular option just due to how they basically work well with the strategy you kind of have to do where you're pushing with a ball. Cloakie has options that are not pushing with a ball, but on a map like that, when you're the slow side, it's a bit more straightforward to do the ball push. But anyway, Capricious with the Cloakie Bot Factory getting scouted out pretty quick. Clearly trying to be aggressive. I mean, on this map, that's kind of how you do it. But surprisingly, Spartacus is the only one reclaiming energy right now. Capricious is setting up energy structures. I don't know why they're not reclaiming the trees. This is the amount of energy you have right at the start. Like, that's right next to your base. Right in the opening section is basically a thousand energy for free. Just about. I don't know why Capricious is not reclaiming that. Spartacus is, and they're going to benefit a lot from that. Just for not having to build as much energy, being able to push more reclaim more easily. Just in general, they're going to have a much easier time. I just don't know why Capricious is not reclaiming. But at any rate, Spartacus is not reclaiming a whole lot. So at this point, if Capricious can actually stop that convict, that'll be a bit of a blow. But honestly, Spartacus is ahead with energy thanks to the reclaim. It's not like it's going to be a huge loss at this point. But Capricious doesn't even have the energy they need. This Solar Collector kind of needs to be finished, too. So I really don't know what Capricious is planning right now. I feel like Capricious is trying to get the harassment in there, but Spartacus is just stopping them at every turn. The bandits are everywhere. It's not really working out. So Capricious doesn't have a whole lot of options. At the same time, though, Capricious is expanding along the map. I mean, they have the northwest pretty much at this point completely. And the north center. I mean... Definitely Capricious' pressure is not in vain. They are expanding in the meantime while forcing Spartacus to defend. And that's a good thing to do. If you're forcing your opponent on defense, go for the expansion in the meantime. Now, don't do it naked because your opponent might counterattack, but it looks like Spartacus has at least or sorry, Capricious has at least some defenses, not a huge amount, but some. However, this is exactly what I mean though. It looks like Spartacus is going to be raiding along the north, although it may just be defensive. No, it looks like they're possibly raiding. We'll see what those bandits do. It, at this point, it is defensive. It'd be a good place to raid from, though. There's nothing defending the north side. And that would really break Capricious' whole strategy right now. Because Capricious is basically banking on Spartacus respecting the raiding forces that Capricious has too much to counter-raid. And I think that's working so far, but Spartacus is basically playing into that. And Capricious knows it. But at this point, no, Spartacus is... Either figured it out or just decided on principle to go do some counter raiding, and that's exactly what they're doing. And that's, I think, could be very effective. We'll see though. Capricious doesn't have a lot of workers to respond to this, so as soon as they see these bandits, they're probably going to lose this conjurer. And they don't have much else in the way to set up defenses. This one over at home could set up defenses, but not much else. Capricious has forced lightning rifle with radar. I mean, it helps, it's effective, but there's no other support forces right now. And the north side... Oh, that... The Conjurer got away! Okay, so the Conjurer could actually build up... Although, for some reason, building up metal extractors. It needs to build up defenses a bit further back, around here. Like, it needs to build a Lotus basically here. Or about here, actually, in terms of... Since the shield bots are moving. So, build a Lotus here. Defend this. They'll be spent... The bandits will spend a bit of time on this metal extractor. Possibly scout the northwest. But no, it's too late now. Like, they're attacking way too fast. So Spartacus is getting way ahead. They're pretty much pulling the exact same thing Capricious pulled. Setting up expansions while attacking. And Capricious at the same time, not really raiding as much as they need to in order to deal the damage they do to keep their economy going. Is this going to defend or not? Why is this Why is this Conjurer just waiting here? That needs to be... Oh, that's not a Conjurer. It's a Glaive. That's why it's waiting there, because it's not there to build. It looks like Capricious is finally get, realizing... Oh, no, I see. It's the Caretaker's just auto-reclaim. That's what's going on. 
The character is re just being the thing to help Capricious along because Capricious was not reclaiming. We saw that early on. They're only reclaiming because the, the, the caretakers automatically reclaim and that's why there's no defenses because the glaives come in. So at least Capricious did not lose much of their economy. They do have the north. They should build up some defenses and they do have some plan, but I don't know if that's going to happen in time. Looks like Spartacus is, has no plans to counter raid to the north. So Capricious does have time. And once again, Spartacus looks like they're under pressure. They are playing defensive, setting up thugs. I don't see any outlaws. I do see Racketeer. They want to counter the commander outright. Thugs and Felon as well. So standard Thug Felon Ball. No outlaws for anti-glaive, but the Felon will be the anti-glaive. So that works. Okay, so we have the Glaives over to the north as well. Capricious learned their lesson from the last attack. Unfortunately, they did not learn the fundamental lesson, which is that Spartacus is not going to be completely cowed by pressure, meaning that Capricious does need to have some static defense around the map somewhat in order to be able to push back any counter-raid attempts. But at the same time, Spartacus does not counter-raid in a very committed fashion. They hit a few things. They hit nearby areas. They basically are more trying to secure their own territory than completely break the opponent's back. But at the same time, that's still enough to at least bait Capricious out. So Spartacus is able to hold that south side. Pretty much has it. Capricious has the north. Spartacus has the south. But Capricious has the center. And Spartacus has pretty much two-thirds of the economy of Capricious. And it's going to show really soon. Especially since Spartacus is not pushing as much metal as they could. They don't have the energy to push it. They are not reclaiming right now, which is surprising. Despite the fact that there's this idle worker right here. They're not reclaiming energy. And because of that, they aren't really able to use up all their metal. Oh, there we go. Now they're finally reclaiming. Or are they? No, not, not in a committed fashion. Oh, there we go. There's the reclaim. Over to the north is where they have the reclaim going on, which is good. But it's still kind of less than ideal. And Capricious, their commander, just wrecking all of those bandits. I mean, lighting a commander with auto repair and disruptor bomb, because why not? And loads and loads of build power. Capricious can basically just set up wherever they'd like with that commander. The only weakness, of course, being the commander has to be there. And the Felon still on the way, but not building up as quickly as it needs to. Fusion Reactor, a minute away from production. I mean, that's probably not even going to be enough. I don't... I imagine the game will last long enough, but really... I don't know if it'll be... That Fusion Reactor will be up in time to make a difference. Whereas Capricious, they have a solid 40 energy without Reclaim. Not that they've been reclaiming very much at all anyway, but... They do have a solid 40 energy. And this caretaker will start reclaiming as soon as he gets the chance, so that's still going to be a thing. How do I... I can't really show it. But yeah, that is going to be a thing regardless. And of course, snipers. Snipers, as always, being the most useful unit for the Cloakie Bot... Or one of the most useful units for the Cloakie Bot factory. Of course, Dirtbag out to... I mean, the Dorkback Decloak is going to be nice, but that's inside of Capricious' territory. Yeah, okay. Snipers have been revealed. We know snipers exist. We already knew they existed. Although, actually, come to think of it, the Dirtbags are doing... They're doing a number on those Spectres. Spectres, not Sharpshooters, but yeah, they're doing a number on them. I, how, what is the attack power? Oh, 36. Yeah, I guess we have enough Dirtbags. That's actually... That's substantial. Never mind. That, that was pretty powerful. Granted, granted, the Felon still died. So Spartacus still lost their army. So Capricious basically has the advantage. This is the last ditch attempt. Dirtbag spam, trying to get rid of all this, all these specters. Maybe break the center as well if they're lucky. That'll be nice, that'll be helpful, but still Capricious has an economic advantage. Spartacus has some reclaim, but they don't have the production to make that work. Capricious does have the production to make that work. Although they were accessing a little bit, but they still have the production and the energy and the metal and everything they need to make that all work. So Capricious is going to have no problem just pushing this back. Well, Spartacus, on the other hand, they need a lot more caretakers. They need a lot more stuff. They have their commander just upgrading. That sort of helps. Still not great, though. So Capricious pushing back once again. The center is being contested, but I don't think it's going to be contested for long. I think Capricious has it. Capricious has the south gradually pushing through with the commander. Really, that commander could take the entire south side all by themselves. And the north side... Idle Conjurers could be reclaiming some stuff, but really, it almost doesn't matter at this point. 
I can almost see building a couple caretakers and building, I don't know, gunship plant maybe? Just to attack from the north. Or even from this position, almost... Oh, spider bot for the crab maybe? I don't know. Ridiculous things. I mean, there can be a waste of resources in both cases. Just thinking, that conjurer is not really doing much. It could do something. Maybe just defense push. Simple thing, but just defense push down. Or if this gets too hairy, build a silo over to the north. But it looks like, no, building up some economy. Taking those freed metal extractors, turning them into their own metal extractors. And Spartacus on the gunship plan. That's that's where we see the gunship plan coming in here. What is that going to build, though? Probably rapiers, just given the forces trying to counter. But at this point, nothing. And how many spectres are there, by the way? There's only the one, but that's still a big threat. I mean, between the Spectre, the Warriors, and the Warriors are not going down that quickly. The Outlaw doesn't really have much to counter, and of course, the Zeus can tear apart those shields no problem. And then the Warrior just tears everything else apart after the shields are gone, so... Really, the big problem is more static defense, and no! Banshees, despite the fact that Warriors pretty much destroy Banshees outright. At this point, Capricious needs to hold back, they need to regroup. They need to fall back a bit. This is not working out. They need to put themselves in a favorable position because this is not good terrain. And they're moving through a choke point. And from that choke point, they're basically going one at a time already. Even without the choke point, they're one at a time. But yeah, this is where the Banshees are going to regret their life's decisions. Because Warriors do not make life easy for Banshees. Still, like I said, though, the south side is being taken out completely. Capricious just setting up caretakers for the reclaim. Just about. Reclaim and defense construction. But honestly, it's more for the reclaim, I'm sure, because Capricious' commander has like 30 build power. 36 build power, yeah. They don't need caretakers to build stuff up. And now even more metal for Capricious. I mean, at this point, Capricious' only weakness right now is mobility. And being able to break through. Like, mobility and this anti-mid-force. Like, crowd control against thugs. Another felon is coming up, though. There should still be some snipers up, or specters, rather. If they're, if not, they will be rebuilt soon enough. But still... Oh, no, no, that's not. That's not it. But yeah, at this point, those racketeers are causing a problem. I think the lack of glaives is starting to cause a problem, but the lotuses as well are causing a problem. And Capricious going for the heavy tank. Oh, are we going to see Reapers to try to do some defense busting, or are we going to see some banishers for crowd control? Those are the two options I see primarily. There could be others, but those are the two that seem most obvious. Although the north side getting wrecked as, at the same time, Capricious is going to have a hard time keeping this up. But then the commander over to the south, once again asserting why Capricious is having an easier time in this game than Spartacus is. I mean, Spartacus has been holding on, and the north side harassment, I and mean, this Banshee harassment is doing a good job. This is where more defenses would have actually been a really good idea. A Stardust or a Razor or something over to the north. Well, while that particular builder was idle, this one over here. While it was idle over to the north side. But still, it's there. It's cloaked. It's probably not going to be killed by the Banshees before it gets a chance to rebuild the north side. So either the Banshees are going to have to be out of the fight in order to secure the north. Or they're going to have to go out of position, allowing, allowing the worker to get back in. It looks like Goliath is the option. I'm going to try to just simply go for raw firepower. I mean, it does deal a lot of damage, and it would probably crowd control the thugs. Actually, it would crowd control the thugs. Yeah, the standard tank buster cannon. That Oh, no, not a high area of effect. Never mind. I mean, it should break it pretty quickly, but it's still not the option I would have immediately gone for. Now, Capricious Commander going down, but that did force all of Spartacus' army out of position. Not the best option, though. Capricious did not want to lose that. They were putting a lot into that commander, but at the same time, that did set up a position. That's kind of hard to break, and Spartacus does have only half of their army in position, and the Goliath might be able to take it apart right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... Oh, right, because Slow Beam would get rid of the shields. Never mind. This is actually going to be more effective than I thought. Still, I would have gone for Reapers myself. Reapers and Banishers myself, just to deal with... Potentially the quick moving crowd control and also because, well, it's cheaper. <laughs> like it's half the cost or no, a third of the cost. You get rid of the dirt bags for free. You get rid of all these units. And banishers, a few banishers against these thugs would have done a good job as well. Probably a better job, actually. The Goliath is a little bit too concentrated for me. 
I think it's a little too concentrated for really any good strategy. The Banshees will be able to take it out. It's even hard to see how much health it has left, but yeah, it's going down fast. Is Spartak's going to turn this around? Because I think they will. I mean, losing that Goliath was a... That's a massive blow. Why did they go for... I mean, the Panthers kind of make sense, but even then, it's a little late in the game for that to be super useful. Reaper and Banisher, that's what you make the Heavy Tank Factory for like that. The Goliath just doesn't have the splash damage needed to get through. That's what I noticed. The 16 area effect, yeah, it dealt some damage. Did a decent okay job, but not enough. Didn't have the fire rate, didn't have... I mean, it was too much heavyweight stuff. The Banshees can take... I mean, Banshees are anti-heavy. Banshees in groups just tear everything apart because they have... No, they have one strong attack that hits one enemy. And Spartacus takes the game kind of thanks to Capricious going for that Goliath, which was, like I said, a bad move. You have your opponent, they have Racketeers, they have Banshees, they have Dirtbags. So, I mean, the Felon's the only only part of that army, the only part of Spartacus's army that is going to have a hard time dealing with a heavy unit. Every other part of their army is suited to deal with heavy units. Dirtbags distract them, so their low rate of fire ends up working against them. Banshees have an easy time when they're all focused on one target, because they can't really hit and run easily. And... What was the other one? Oh, yeah, Racketeers. Racketeers are obvious. Racketeers stun everything out. They disarm it, and then that... If it's one unit, it does... The Racketeer is super valuable. If it's one unit, it's fighting. Or one primary unit, it's fighting. So yeah, Capricious just did not really adapt the strategy the way they needed to. Which is kind of surprising, because Capricious I've seen so far to be a really adaptable player, but that was... Not sure what they were thinking. I think they were thinking that Spartacus was still going to go for the standard ball strategy, and they were. It's just on top of that, they had the Banshees, and they are they already exposed the Banshees, and the Dirtbags... I mean, the Dirtbags from before were dead, but that was still an option on the table. And the Banshees alone, not to mention the Banshees and Racketeers alone, should discourage heavy unit investment. I mean, Banishers are probably okay. Their crowd control power does probably outweigh... The fact that they're still heavy units. And for the cost of the Goliath, that would have been four or five banishers, which would have been much better against the thugs. On top of the other support units. But yeah, overall, that was not... I think that was a, a mi real misstep at the end of the match. Anyway, and it looks like North Chilean G knows Capricious well enough to know that Capricious, when they're feeling tense and nervous, don't know what to do, they fall back to a heavy factory. Which, I guess that's an interesting thing to note. That's Capricious' style. They go, f they try to adapt, but if in doubt, if feeling pressured, they will go for a heavy factory. That's an exploitable weakness right there, and I think Spartacus may have already known that and decided to exploit it. But that's really good to know. So that's going to be it for me tonight. Thanks for watching, and for those not aware who didn't watch the announcement video, I have started a Dark Souls 3 Let's Play. I know, yet another Dark Souls Let's Play. But I did, so if you're interested, it's on the YouTube channel. And that is... That's going on. Basically, it's uploading about half an hour's worth of content a day. Alongside other stuff. So, like, it'll be a 0k episode. where like This will be uploaded kind of in between the Dark Souls stuff. Or with Skullgirl stuff will be uploaded in between. But yeah, so check that out if you haven't already. If you're interested. And otherwise, have a good night. Thanks for watching.